looks for it. But. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Okay. Ready? Are we rolling right now? We're rolling right now. Hey. But we're not on yet. And we're gonna be on as soon as I say, let's hit it. corner as you know I have a lot of celebrities on a lot of people in bodybuilding and I came up with an idea or my girlfriend came up with the idea calling it behind the mass meaning behind the muscle a lot of people work out and they have other things to the, their life they have other sides to them they have something behind them to do we know nothing about and for the past oh, couple of months everybody I've had on here has another thing besides bodybuilding and I've always said that this is what we need to do in life we have to have plan A plan B plan C so I brought Jeff on, who's been a friend of mine for a long time, and it's been my pleasure to have Jeff Bornstein here. Jeff? Hey, Rick, good to see you again. Thank and you. we've been friends for a long, long time. He competed in bodybuilding years ago. I met him at the gym. He trained alongside of me for years, and he's, he's uh, you trained with somebody else, too. Albert Beckles. Albert Beckles. Yeah. And you? you uh, Tony Pearson. Tony Pearson. Yeah, yeah. And he competed, but he also has other sides to him that I think are really interesting, and I thought we're going to bring those out. He's a magician. His wife reads minds, and he's also a stuntman for films and TV and, and all the things you see that when you see people doing crazy stunts and stuff. So I wanted to talk about that. I thought it would be interesting, and here we go. Awesome. All right. So let's talk about You sent me a, a shot of you competing. Uh-huh. What year was that? <clears throat> uh, that was, uh, gosh, I believe it, 88 Palm Springs uh, uh, Bodybuilding Classic. Yeah. My very first show. Yeah. Uh, I think it was 20, 20, 20 guys there. I, I took fifth. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was... Uh, Actually, that's pretty good. Uh, was it? I, I had no barometer, so I, I was kind of upset. Hey, about anytime it. you're in the top five, you're, you're <laughs> a winner, you know? Yeah. Uh, I had a blast doing it. Um, I was on the, um, uh, the the cocaine diet at the time. Yeah. <laughs> that cut you up? <laughs> yeah, pretty much, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Big time, man. Yeah. And uh, I had a blast. Learned a lot. Albert was wonderful. He taught me. This is when we were training over at... Uh, I met you at the Golds at North, Northridge, or mm -hmm. was it? Northridge. Northridge. And remember the room that, that Angel had? It was the, uh, the it was a room with all mirrors. That was in Northridge. Which, which one? They had Northridge Golds. Um, I don't think they, they had a, a shower upstairs, but I don't think they had a, a posing room. Now Venice had a posing room. I didn't. No, it wasn't Venice. I, it was well, maybe a, they did. I don't remember. I just remember using the gym and the showers and. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm almost positive it was uh, the posing room in Northridge, but Albert was sitting there for two, three hours with me. Really? And just sit. Do this, strike this, strike that, and you know, I mean, just, I mean, I'd, you know, throw a side chest, and he'd say, no, nope, bring it back, and I'm like, but it feels the same. He goes, trust me. Yeah. And I mean, oh, he's good at that yeah, stuff. Yeah. He's working with a girl in the gym this morning, a little Asian girl that's really cute and a great body. I was walking in, he's with somebody else, and she's got her back to them, and her butt's out, poached out like this, and they're looking at her butt, and I'm thinking, <laughs> what a sight this is. <laughs> you know, I mean, are you really helping her, or are you just looking at the butt? You know? Right, right, right. I was looking at the butt. I think he was looking at my ass, too. Yeah, anyway, so he's good. joking, Albert. Joking. Yeah, he's good at what he does. And uh, <laughs> what kind of training program did he give you? Oh, gosh. Uh, I was six days twice, uh, uh, training twice a day, six days a week. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was back then when <clears throat> dieting was so different than today. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, I don't even think we did cardio back then. No, we didn't do cardio back then. Just uh, no carbs, uh, protein, and uh, lots of water. Uh, and then when I was done competing, I think I had I ate four huge large pizzas. Really? Yeah. yeah people, after the show. People do that. Yeah. It's you know you can stay on that diet for a long, long time, and then you get a craving, and you go one day and you eat that kind of stuff, and then it kind of like makes you sick to your stomach and say, okay, I'm back on the diet again. It was mostly almond. I did all, did a lot of almonds, uh, a lot of protein shakes. They didn't have creatine or anything back then. No. Uh, at least nothing. But they had they had the um, we call I think we call them the Rocky Diet. You know, I was, I, I oh, with the eggs. Yeah, I tried that a couple times. I powered it down. Yeah. Don't recommend it. Okay. Well, look, uh, uh, this is for you guys. You, uh, you see them eating rags. I'm going to eat rags. Rags don't digest, mm. they can burn the paint off your car. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you see people who have their, car, their cars egg, all the paint comes Right. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not really the best thing for your stomach. It doesn't break down. It kills the biotin in your system. Oh, wow. So if you just soft boil them <laughs> and eat them, you're better off than eating them raw. It, it just doesn't work. Information that we didn't know back then. Uh, I did. I did. Well, you did. Okay. Well. Somebody told me, and I think it works. Um, and your workout routine was how many days a week? Six days a week, twice a day. Oh, really? Twice yeah, a day? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was what twenty 
four twenty five. What else do you have to do when you're twenty four twenty five except for maybe work? If you if you weren't yeah. serious about bodybuilding, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. yeah. So anyway, you're a bouncer at night, and then you uh, you train during the day, and right. you know, and, you know, and you need your rest, and, too. And, yeah, and you pay the bills. What got you at that point? Were you doing stunts? Yes, I started doing stunts right out uh, right out of uh, when I got out of the army. All right, now for a lot of you guys out there that are bodybuilders, a lot of you come to California and train. I've had many of you contact me that say I want to get into acting, I want to do stunt work, and also your wrestlers out there that do indie shows. I've always asked about getting into stunts. It's got to be one of the hardest things in the world to get into. Yes. It's just don't go fill out a form and say, here I am. <laughs> you know, I know how to fall over. Right. Because there's a lot of different stunts. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm my, myself personally, I'm a fight guy and a car guy. So precision driving and fights. There's some guys that specialize. Exactly. You, you know, in, in uh, high falls. Yeah. Uh, which I, my high fall is, uh, is about 60 feet. Which is pretty high. Uh, it, it's high. You know, it, off this table, if you land wrong, it, it's high. You yes. know. Uh, but I'm not a high fall guy. Uh, um, some guys are fire guys. You like stuff on fire. That's cool. I've gone out of a seven story window backwards on fire. Um, not my best, uh, most fun gag, if you will. But it, hey, it, it paid the bills, you know. And I yeah. got paid for getting beat up, which is which is fun. And it's all no one ever gets to see what goes on behind the scenes. No, you know. And uh, I, I'll share a little story with you. Um, I was working on the movie The Specialist. Um, <clears throat> was was Stallone. And I'm doing this fight scene uh, on, a, on the back of a bus. Got about this much room, Rick. You know, that's it. Yeah. And so I'm punk number three, and I got the long ponytail, and, I'm, and the music's playing, and Stallone walks on the bus like this, and, and uh, uh, punk, uh, punk one is in, uh, right about halfway, and then punk two and three, him and I are in the back of the bus. He walks on, he says to punk one, uh, go ahead and give this seat up, because the pregnant lady needs a seat. And so he says, uh, F you. And Stallone says, excuse me? F you. Stallone hands, her, hands, uh, hands this guy the glasses, says, excuse me, and bam, punk one gets knocked out, punk two gets knocked out, punk three, me, I come in with a knife, and I'm like this, and I got, go like, and I got my full moment of full glory close, I'm just like, uh, I mean, it, it, bam, I'm like, yeah, and so the whole scene was supposed, the whole scene was supposed to go, which uh, his stunt double, Mark D'Alessandro, him and I coordinated this for about three days straight, okay, just choreographed the fight, supposed to be uh, up, uh, right, left, uh, Clint Eastwood style, uppercut, hang off of the hang off of the thing on uh, the, the 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 pole, yeah. and then kick out the kick bus right window. Yeah. Supposed to go out the window. That was the scene. Yeah. So Stallone comes on, and we do it, and he misses one of the one one of the hits. And he goes like this, like this. Instead of coming like this, I didn't expect an elbow, and he knocks me out. I, literally clocks me. I go out knocked out, and I'm like, oh damn it, out. And I get back up. I said, I'm fine, Sly. I'm fine. He goes. No, you're not. No, you're not. And blood's going squirt, 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 squirt. And at that moment, I'm like, really, I'm fine. <laughs> I oh, go out. Wow, yeah. I go out again, right? So anyway, they end up using the uh, end up using the uh, uh, the footage where I actually got knocked out. It was pretty funny. But that kind of stuff you can never you can never really prepare for. And guys who have actually done stuff like that, uh, no names mentioned at all. If you complain about it, that's what we get paid for. If you complain about it, you'll be blackballed from the business. Oh, you can't complain. It's do, like a do you know, do you know Steve S. I'll leave it as his last name. Yeah, I know you mean. Okay, stunt guy. Um, I don't know who did it. Rocky III uh, broke his jaw. He's a stunt man. He complained about it. He was blackballed. Never worked in the business again. Yeah. So if you get hurt, that's what you get paid you're for. At your own risk. Yeah. But there, your, your pay levels are depending on what stunt you do. Yeah, we well, have you got your day rate, your sag rate, right? And then you have your adjustment. Um, I mean, it's all up to the coordinator. But if you're doing a big scene, like uh, for instance, um, Fast and Furious 6, Corey Eubanks, you know Corey, mm -hmm. okay, a good friend of ours. Corey was doing the opening bus scene on the Fast and Furious 6 where the bus cannon rolls and it goes over. I don't know what the number is, but somewhere probably six digits where Corey gets uh, uh, paid a lot of money to do that kind of stuff. There you could set your own rate. Uh, if, if I was gonna go flying over a table, uh, coordinator says, hey, I'll give you a $400 bump. I'm like, yeah, that works. Yeah, yeah. they'll do that, right? Yeah. You know, so. um, how did you? What was your? First, how did you get into your first job? I mean, if someone wants to come out and say, "I want to be a stuntman," I'm a bodybuilder. Does your bodybuilding help you? I think it helped me in a couple couple different ways. A because I had that look, but it also worked against me. And here's yeah. why: you can't double anybody. Thank you. <laughs> Bingo. And they kept yeah. telling me that I'm like, yeah. "No, I'm fine." I'm fine. But of course, yeah. ego got in the way. I'm like, "Ah, oh, but no, you know who I think I am." For 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 the main actors like Tom Cruise and and, and people like that. They're small, and so if you're too big and they need a stunt double, you mm. can't fill the bill because you're too big, much bigger than them, so right. it doesn't look right. Right, exactly. Uh, and, and I know girls uh, like Cheryl Russo can double little boys mm. because she's small. You know Mike Vigneault's? Yes, yeah. Yeah, Mike, Mike's uh, Danny DeVito's double on um, uh, um, 
Oh shoot, what's a TV show? Anyway, he doubles Danny DeVito. Yeah, you've got to you got to fit the role. But then if you have your own look, and then you do stunts like wrestling for me, I got I could do some stuff with that. Um, but that's few and far between. You know that comes every once in a while. Sure. But regular stunt work, if you want to do that, you, they used to have stunt schools. I think um, there was Kahana, Kim Kahana, yeah, who was around for a while, and then a guy named uh, something uh, Ken Duncan, who I actually took classes from years ago, and then there was um, who's the family, the father and all the sons, the Baxleys. Before that, oh, uh, Paul, um, I know you're talking Stater. about Stater. Thank you, Paul Stater. Yeah, Paul Stater. When I did Man from Atlantis, he was teaching stunts. Okay, and uh, he wanted me to come to some of his classes. I, I said I don't really want to be a stunt man. I had a stunt job on the show. But it was because I was a special type of guy for that particular role. But it's not easy, and, and um, it's good to have the desire. And if you guys ever want to try it, come out and go. To, you you got to meet people. You, know, you have to you got to network. You got to yeah. get out there. Basically, we call it. You got to get there and hustle and pound the pavement. And it's, yeah. it's no different than acting. If you want to, um, uh, it's still a magician. It's still different than bodybuilding. Bodybuilding. Yeah. Compete in a contest. You got to meet the judges. You got to schmooze. You got to let them know who you are. You don't go in blind. And say, oh, "Here's John Smith from Iowa," right. and they don't know you unless you have a dynamic body, and then they'll take a look. But you're up a lot against a lot of competition. Most certainly. So getting to know people, I just had Flex Wheeler on. He was talking about the political side of that, and there is a lot of politics involved. Yeah. You know, the people you talk to that like you and they're they're biased to you and all that. Um, okay, so then you got into Magic How. Mm. Uh, I've been doing magic since I was ten years old. Um, remember the magician Marshall Brodeen? Uh, it was a commercial. Hi, my name is Marshall Brodeen. I'm a professional magician. These are you keep magic cards. Have your friends take a card, look at a card, tell them what the card is, and call the number at the bottom of your screen. And I'm watching this as I'm ten years old. And, Mom, I want these magic cards. So I, I get the cards, and the rest is history. Uh, I started doing magic shows when I was uh, ten years old, and. Um, Everyone from the uh, neighborhood would come. I'd have my bathroom on as my magic cape. Yeah. And I tried experimenting with, with birds and rabbits and this and that. And finally it evolved into sleight of hand, which you've seen the act a few times, and stealing watches. Uh, yeah. It's called friendly pickpocketing. Thank you, disclaimer. <laughs> yeah. Okay, because I give it back when I buy a ring. And, um, uh, and then um, my parents took me to uh, It's Magic, um, uh, which started in 1963, I believe, Wilshire Ebell Theater. That was one of the very first magic shows I went to. And then the rest is history. Started working restaurants. My very first gig I ever had, I was 13 years old. Uh, Mancini's Pizza Boy, right next to Left Hook Gym, boxing yes, gym. Yes, Remember that? Yeah. Up, up on Roscoe. And uh, God, it's 35 years ago. Holy, where'd the time go, man? So I just evolved into stand-up. Yeah. Part. Yeah. Now you're doing the Armed Forces. And uh, now we have a tour called Operation Bravo. You can check it out, operation-bravo.com, uh, where we entertain the troops. Uh, in fact, we leave uh, Thursday to go to uh, Whiteman Air Force Base for the fourth time to entertain the airmen over in, in Missouri. Okay, you have another interesting side. You met your wife on the internet. Yes, I did. And she lived in Oklahoma. She did live in Oklahoma. And uh, if we don't get along tonight, she might go back <laughs> to Oklahoma. <laughs> this amazing man. couple. He meets a woman, she's gorgeous, they, they fall in love, not only to find out that she also is a mind reader. Yes, she is. So she became part of her act. And there is no BS with the mind reading. I've had it done to me. I've had her tell me the coins I have in my pocket, phone numbers on my phone, the names. First girl you ever kissed? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, she'll, she'll come up with it. And it's all my kids, she did it to them. It's unbelievable. I've never seen anybody able to do that. And it's not phony. It's real. It just actually happens. So it's really worth checking out because it's, uh, it's an amazing thing. If you want to check it out, uh, it's mindreadingwife.com. Right. Again, mindreadingwife.com. Right. Com. Yeah. It's, it's very cool. Um, and you're still training? Still training. Uh, not as much as I used to. Uh, God, I wish I had the time. I mean, my intent, you know, I got caught up. You know, like I said, we're leaving this, uh, uh, we're leaving this Thursday. And my and my intention was to go to the gym today. You know, how many times is your how, how many how, how often do you make a plan and it rarely goes that way? That's kind of how it went. Well, well, I make a plan, but my first plan in the morning is to go to the gym. Right. But sometimes you get sidetracked, and you know, and, and as I you get so. older, I'll tell you guys as well. And, and you're a lot younger than I am. There are days when your body just doesn't want to go, and you force it, and you do. But then you know what? You need a day off. Yeah. yeah. You need time off to recover, and re you know, when you're busy like you are and I am. Going every day, it beats you down. Yeah, it does. And you need that rest break. I slept eight hours solid last night. Then you wake up. Normally, I'm up ten times a night just to pee. You know, you, you talk about pissing. You know, it's funny is, I, cause I, I've got insomnia. I mean, I don't go to bed until at least two, three o'clock. Mm -hmm. I, if I go to bed at twelve, I'm screwed. I know I'll be up at four o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. It just, it ain't gonna work. Yeah. So I know if I go to bed at two o'clock, I'm good. Three o'clock is pushing at four o'clock. Uh, I'll still get up at ten o'clock, and I only need about four or five hours. But I get some water. If I drink about uh, eight ounces, half a glass, uh, I'll be up pissing three times. Oh, always. If I drink, this is the most bizarre thing. If I drink a full 16-ounce glass of water, 
I will not have to get up to pee. That's interesting. Okay. She does that to me if I drink hot tea at night. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, it's and weird. You just have to go all go. Yeah. Now, if people want to find you now, it's, you have your websites. Got to our website. So if you want to check out... Uh, why don't you check out the acting and the stunts? You can check out uh, um, actorjeff.com. Again, actorjeff.com has my stunt reel on there. Or if you want to check out the mind reading, go to mindreadingwife.com. Again, that's mindreadingwife.com. Or if you want to check out what we do for the troops, it's operation-bravo.com. So put a little dash in between the operation and the bravo.com, and you'll see where we're going, where we've been, and, and what, uh, what's coming up. He's a busy guy. He's a bodybuilder. He's all the other things above. And the thing is, is that you don't have to limit to one thing in the gym. There is something behind the mass. And that's what I've been trying to get to with everybody I bring on. They always have another side that I really find fascinating. And it's what makes the world work. So I want to thank you for being here. Thanks, man. Thanks, buddy. And I, I hate to bring this up, but there was a while back I loaned you some money. <laughs> get out. You used to remember that? Yeah. It was like $10. Do you want interest? Because you're interested. I'm interested in getting it back. Hold on a second. You got it. Hey, wait, wait, wait. I'm joking, man. I'm joking. Is part of my ten dollar bill? Hey, whoa! There's nothing left. There's a buck. A dollar. Hey, no, you broke. You burned up nine dollars <laughs> out of my ten. All right, guys. See you next time on Rex Corner, and have a good one. Thank you. Equalizer, baby. See you next time.